Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of R Programming Language. In this video, I'll be talking about data frames. In my previous video, I have talked about matrices. Uh, so um, we are currently on the topic of data structures. So I'll be explaining the data frame in detail in this video. So these are the topics which you can see in front of you, uh, which I'll be discussing in this video. So what is data frame? Data frame, we can simply say like it's a way of storing data in the form of tables. The way the tables uh, are there, like we do have uh, uh, rows and columns available. The same way data frame is used to store data in the form of rows and columns in R. So data frames are two dimensional data structure, right? So let's see how we can create a data frame using data dot frame function. For this, I'm going to take one variable Q in which we have to use data dot frame. Okay, function inside this, we can define our column names. So column names, uh, let's suppose I'm putting it here, three columns, one is maybe serial number, okay, SN, the which I'm putting it like uh, one column two, then I can have H second column, which I can define with the combined function C, okay, I'm putting it here, uh, maybe 21 and 29. And third column, I can have a name. Okay, so this is equal to C, I'm putting it here ABC, then I can have a XYZ. Okay, we do have other optional uh, arguments available like string as factors. The reason I'm not discussing it right now string as factors because we haven't discussed factors topic yet. Okay, although the thing is what is string as factor string as factor means like by default data dot frame function converts the character vector into a factor. If you want to suppress the behavior, we can pass this argument. So I'm not discussing it right now because factors topic is not yet covered in this playlist. So let's try to create a data frame. You can see if I press uh, enter Q, I got my data frame created or a table created in which I got three column names and two row names, right? This is done. If you want to check the class of Q, it should be data frame, all right? So this is how we can create a data frame. Although it's not the case like we can only create a data frame using data dot frame function. We do have our data input functions available in R, which I'll be discussing in future, like read dot table, read dot CSV, all they read data into a data frame only, right? Next point is I need to discuss some functions on, on data frames like str means if you want to know the schema or structure of a data frame, we can use str. It should return the uh, structure of data frame means like what are the data types we are using behind the scenes, integer, numeric and character, you can see it here. So it's a structure. In the same way, we, can, we are having another uh, uh, function available with the likes of names. If you want to know or print the names or column names or attributes name of a data frame, just use names function. You can see SN age name got printed. Next is n call. If you want to uh, print the number of columns of the data frame, you can use n call. If you want to print the number of rows of data frame, you can use n row. All right. And in the same way, if you want to print the length, length is equivalent of uh, like a number of columns, which will be three. So why I'm using length? Actually, uh, this data frame is a special case of list. Okay, list is a, another data structure that I've already have explained a little bit in the introductory video of our data structures, which I'll be separately putting the putting up the video. But uh, for your information, data frame is a special case of the list. So here we are just try to find the length of a list, okay, which is equivalent of number of columns, which is three. So we are done with the functions here. Next point is how we can access the elements. So not every time we need, uh, not every time will be, uh, will be uh, nah, using this entire data frame. Sometimes we have to fetch some data. Let's see how to fetch a data. So we can fetch a data or we can access the elements either via maybe like a list or a matrix. Let's see how we can access the elements from a data frame like a list. I can use the square brackets here. Okay, Q, then I can use name. It will give me ABC and XYZ, right? This is how we can fetch the particular column. In the same way, I can also use dollar sign uh, as well. Q dollar. Okay, you can see it here. I can select any of the column which I want to print. Let's suppose name again, ABC, XYZ got printed as well. This is how we can uh, access the elements. In the same way, we can also access the elements of a data frame like a matrix. Okay, how we can, uh, if you can recall my previous video, uh, we can uh, access the elements of a matrix by providing the index for row and column. How? Uh, let's take one simple example here. We are having inbuilt data set available in our uh, data frame available called trees. Okay, 
so if you want to uh, let's suppose let me show you trees it's already available right it's an inbuilt data frame available in the trees so data frame can be examined uh, using a functions uh, like str or head okay let's use head here okay str we already have used head we can also use head uh, of trees okay uh, i want to print maybe top uh, some rows okay so by default the trees data structure is of we are having 31 rows and 3 columns you can see it here 31 rows and 3 columns okay and we can also display the first 3 rows with the help of head this is how we can access the elements okay uh, like we used to access the things in the matrix and moving further the way we were using in the case of matrices we can also use the same kind of range in accessing the elements of the uh, data frame as well so in this case what we are doing we are just uh, selecting the second and third row here okay so I'm, i have to put in a double uh, sorry square brackets all right so selecting second and third row you can see it here so the second and third row got printed as well we can also select the rows with some uh, some condition how we can do it so trees all right which is my data frame okay so i can uh, write here trees then i can use dollar sign i want to use height here as my uh, condition the condition is it is should be more than 82 and just put a comma so here we are selecting rows with the height greater than 82 this is how we can access the elements uh, like a matrix so this is how we can access the elements in a data frame moving further we are having next point is how we can modify data frame so we can modify the data frame uh, through the reassignment what it means let's see this is my original data frame queue so i can use here uh, i want to now change this age 21 to 20 in the first row how we can do so i'm just putting some reference and i'm defining age and here i'm using uh, this reassignment uh, i'm putting it 20 so you can see it here q and I, you can see it here 20 got written here you can see it here now earlier, earlier it was 21 now it's 20 got written in this case so this is how we can reassign right next is how we can add the components add the components means how we can add the rows or a columns to our existing data frame so for this we have a inbuilt functions available r bind or uh, this one c bind so how we can make use of it again this is my original data frame i want to add a new row how, how i can add with the r bind function means uh, adding the rows so this is my first put up the original data frame and then specify the row which you want to add i want to add this uh, thing in my original data frame i'm putting one as serial number 28 as my age and i'm putting some name as asd okay you can see third row got added as well so in the same way we can also add a new uh, column as well with the c bind function same way q comma you can specify it here i want to have new column called state and you can define state as maybe uh, hp and we can specify as punjab all right so this is the c bind you can see it here another column got added as well right this is how we can add the components last point is how we can delete the components simple is quite simple let's suppose q then dollar you can specify let's suppose state which i've recently added and simply assign null here and u double l in capitals and what will happen with this if you again print q you can see there's no state available now so we can delete this by assigning null to it so we can also do this with the help of reassignment as well what it means this is my original q now so what i what i can do q okay then i can use q and i can specify minus one comma in this way what will happen you can see it here I, I just get rid of the first row this is how we can make use of it last point is empty cars again it's an inbuilt data frame available in the r you can also apply all the functions in it using empty cars you can see it here this is an empty cars data frame in which we got a uh, row names available as well as column names available you can apply all the functions that you have which are used here str n row n call on this as well right so this is all we are having for this video i hope you must have understood the concept of data frame and its operations the next video i'll be coming up with the list thanks for watching guys see you next video